go. That is so cool. Yeah, those are sweet. That's yeah. the coolest thing ever. Yeah, That's amazing. Last fall, Joe Rogan shot a monster elk. Having trouble finding Joe in this video? That's because he's wearing Origin camo. Yeah. Oh, the Origin camo? Oh my dope. god. It's beautiful to have something that's 100% American made. The fabric, the construction, everything. all of it, everything. It's such an honor to be involved in it. It is an honor. But we don't just make camouflage hunting gear. What is that boot company that you're you're involved with? Origin. We're That's making boots as well. Same thing as well. By the way, I got the boots. They're dope. <laughs> Your boots are excellent. Well, thank you. I bought two pairs of them. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So after Joe shot that monster elk, he had an idea and hit us up. He wants us to turn his elk into a pair of boots. But that's not as easy as it sounds. So the goal, turn Joe's elk into a pair of boots and hand deliver them to him at UFC 300. That would be badass. If I get to bring the boots with me to UFC 300. Yeah. All right, here's the plan. We got in contact with the guy who butchered Joe's elk in Utah. He's gonna ship that elk hide to Seidel Tannery in Milwaukee to be made into leather. Seidel is then gonna ship the finished hide to our shoe factory in Farmington, Maine, where we'll cut and sew the boots together. Then, our CEO, Pete, is going to take those boots out to Las Vegas to UFC 300, where he'll hand deliver them to Joe. Sounds easy, but there's still a few unknowns that might hold us up. Don't mess the boots up. Because it's not like I can just go out to the floor and be like, hey, let's grab some more leather and remake the boot. We have not made a boot out of elk hide. We have done moose, so I'm hoping it's somewhat similar because the moose came out really nice. This is kind of a one-shot thing. The crazy thing to figure out is like, how does the leather work? Because all leather is different. The way we put it in the machines, the way we pull the leather, the way we stretch the leather, you don't know the strength of the leather. You don't know if it's gonna rip. So we have to look at things and make sure that when we're doing it, we're slowing down and we're making sure we're doing it right because it could backfire on us. I also hope they didn't tag it like Joe Rogan's elk on the box and someone looks at it and was like, I'm stealing Joe Rogan's elk. That's all I'm thinking. It's like, Joe Rogan's elk's gonna show up on eBay and we're gonna have to buy it from eBay and like bid on this thing just to make a pair of boots so we can live up to our word. So I'll be damned. It's not a good situation right now. Uh, I just got a call. They don't know where the leather's at. So think about this. Think about like you went on this hunt and he's there every day. It's his last day. He's hiking in, finally shoots the elk. It's the elk of his dream. We tell him we can make boot, boots out of it. The tannery says they haven't received it. We've reached out to the shipping company. They said they shipped it weeks ago. And so not in good shape as they would say. May have to fly people down to the tannery to see if they got it, look for it, something, man. But yeah, currently right now, we do not have Rogan's elk. So, you know, we had heard that Joe's taxidermist, I guess, had shipped it. And then the tannery never received it, never showed up. And then sort of one day they gave me a message like, hey, it's here. <laughs> that would be in the fall, just because you'll have the cleanest hides with that being completely aniline. This is Fritz Seidel. He's a 26 year old fourth generation tanner from Milwaukee. Back in 2020, he was listening to Jocko's podcast when he heard that the tannery that we used to work with was unfortunately shutting down. Fritz reached out to us and we've been working with the Seidels ever since. It's pretty special to me and um, you can walk around the tannery and there's a lot of people you know making these and uh you know i want to keep them employed i want to keep making it here and you know i don't want to i don't want to let it go so this is actually the elk hide um, they sided it so it's a little smaller two pieces should be able to get good you know get your vamp and good cutting out of it yeah, no room for mistakes no room for mistakes yeah but you know yeah, so. joe requested black yeah, that's why it's that's, black. Oh, okay. That's so why it's black. Joe requested black. So. Joe Rogan's elk hide. Right there. There it is. Made in the USA. 
Joe Rogan's elk hide. This leather's real soft. You feel it? I wonder where Joe shot it. Like, where'd he hit? Because if this is the front shoulder right here, right? I'm gonna go to his Instagram page. He's gotta have it on there, right? Yeah, here it is right here. Up top. That's gotta be the So that would be it. Entry, exit. Yeah. Here's an idea. I'm gonna throw this out there. I don't know if it's a way to do it. If we do the hybrid, it's like this is like a backing, right? So I wonder if he wants an entry on one foot and then on the, on the other foot on the outside, he has the pass through. So he can be like, what are these holes right here? But it'll be backed with this. And you'd be like, oh, that's where your arrow went in, bro. That could be pretty cool. How, what is the shape of it? They're like little, like, what, like circles. You can see like how, how, how big though? Um, I don't know if we can go lay the leather out. Look okay, at it. Yeah, let's, look at it. let's lay it out. Yes, that's the exit. That's the um, entry. I mean, I think that's pretty cool. I'd be stoked. Do we have red leather? You thought throw. This is like pink. Oh, I see what you're saying. That's like a mauve almost. We gotta have something redder than that. We got a bright, a bright red, which looks like a lung shot. I'm thinking like blood red. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Just like dried blood. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. That'll work. That'll work. Let's do it. Let's get mayo and Walk them through what we want to do. <laughs> The plan seems pretty simple. We're gonna spice up our new hybrid boot by incorporating the entry and exit wounds from Joe's Elk in the shaft of the boots and inlay red leather to simulate blood. The only problem is that we only have one shot to get this right. And if we don't cut out the side panel with perfect precision, then we'll have to scrap the entire project. We only have one elk hide and one entry and exit wound. So we had to call on our most skilled craftsman, our footwear wizard, Mayo. Mayo has spent his entire life in the footwear industry and is the perfect guy for the job. Good luck, Mayo. <laughs> Do you feel the pressure? Uh, no, no. It's just normal. <laughs> Mayo and the team successfully finished the shaft of the boot with the red leather inlays. After the rest of the pieces have been cut and prepped, the toe box of the boot, otherwise known as the vamp, is placed into a computerized stitcher for assembly. But something unexpected happened. So here we have the Orisol. This is a computer stitcher that's big enough to stitch the entire vamp all at the same time. It goes through and it moves the piece of leather around the needle. It's programmed to do exactly the perfect stitch on every different size. You ready? Yeah. Okay, so then we hit sew. Uh-oh. That's not good. That's not good. Uh, my needle broke. I'm not really sure. Um, yeah, um, I gotta grab Austin real quick. Hey Austin, I need your help with the Orisol. I need your help with the Orisol. I just broke a needle on Joe Rogan's elf. So it's supposed to stitch down this line and it bunched it up and some of it got up underneath of it and then the needle broke once there was too much material for the needle to go through all at once. So I'm gonna have to replace this piece. After replacing the bad vamp and a successful go with the Orisol machine, it was time for final assembly. All those people that used to go and work in the same place every day, that used to show up and have a common mission and a common goal, m much of the middle class doesn't have that anymore. In America, we've, on a massive scale, 
gotten rid of that class of people's purpose. Look, that's a proud way to make a living. These are craftsmen and craftswomen, by the way, and they're out there, they have a skill set, they're learning a skill set, there's upward mobility. You don't have to go and go to college and go into debt. They want to work with their hands. They want to do something meaningful. They want to build stuff. It's so gratifying to build something, to make something. Something that's really something high quality. Something that's really high quality. It's, yeah. it's, it's so gratifying. Yeah. The people who work in there, salt of the earth Americans the machines that have been brought back from, from rusty piles of junk into functional machines that are creating this stuff, it's, it's freaking beautiful. Well, because what you're saying is that like that kind of manufacturing was literally on its way to oblivion. Yes, and to be part of this movement, we got people that are moving to Maine, moving to North Carolina to, jo to join the team and learn the skill and get after it. It's freaking well, awesome. You want money to go to people that get paid a living wage and get fair health care and benefits i do i do i do i want i want people to get paid well and that's what origin does and that's what you know that's what i think of when i think of something being american made i'm like okay well at least i know these workers are protected we we got we got jobs and we're going to continue to build that company and just bring manufacturing back to america Go to Vegas. Why don't you like the whole factory like stop and everybody just go over to the finishing table and like take photos and everything? I or thought that was the coolest thing. The coolest thing. The coolest thing. I was like, man, dude. dude, like nobody said anything. It's like they're proud. They're like, man, you know, we wanted to make sure they were perfect. Like they really cared yeah. for the product. And that's what's important. Like that, these boots have soul. Of all the boots we've made, they have soul because this animal was a wild animal. It was harvested and skinned and tanned and cut and sewn into badass product. Like, that shit doesn't happen every day. Now, off to the UFC weigh-ins to catch Joe. Uh, Also, how about that BMF fight? Look at this. Ha! 